Hello, and welcome to the first season of DigiFox Studios' new original podcast series, The Blood Drawn Chronicles. Brought to you in part by Cool Comics and Games, Lee County's largest comics and gaming store, and the generous contributions of audiences like you. Thank you. The Blood Drawn Chronicles Season 1, The Manuscripts of a Valpyr, stars Nelson Ventura as Myrick, son of Meyer, Alyssa Kalugden as Karina Gallo, Paul Roberts as Lord Dragon, and Sterling Torville as Lord Tyrus Godfrey. To view the full cast, crew credits, and more, please visit www.digifoxstudios.com forward slash TBDC. On behalf of everyone here at DigiFox Studios, we want to thank you for listening. And now, our story begins. If you're reading this, I bestow a word of caution to those faint of heart. This book contains a record of events that occurred, and acts which I've committed during my time in the world of man. I am Myrick, son of Myr, and these are the manuscripts of a Valpyr. Dinner ended early. After Bazim's dramatics, the look on Otto's face was clear to anyone. He was indeed embarrassed. To him, Bazim had only succeeded in humiliating himself. On the other hand, Bazim was making it very clear to me he wanted to show me something. Otto's fury was further announced when he promptly left the dining room without excusing himself. Bazim and I locked eyes for a brief moment. What was he trying to tell me? Clearly he wanted to stay and talk, but proper etiquacies dictate he leave. As for myself, the scent of garlic was becoming unbearable at this point, and I found myself taking my exit sooner than I had hoped. The night has come, and as I try to make my way outside in hopes of catching Bazim before he leaves, I am stopped by Isla, who holds a lit lamp in front of me. There you are, Mr. Myrick. Pardon me, my lady. I shall like to go outside for a moment. I'm afraid I must insist you stay, sir. A stranger traveling this town at night. Well, it's, it's too dangerous, sir. Please, I implore you to stay. She quivers. I feel her blood as it courses. Her heart could tell its own story as it trembles before me. Part of me wishes to push her out of my way and reach Bazim before it's too late. I take one step forward, and I suddenly remember my objective before I crossed paths with the town's constable. I don't need to step outside. My timing is still fit. My journey can begin at first light. Sir, are you all right? Yes, my lady. Would you like me to show you to your room? No, thank you. I believe I can find it from here. Here, take this. I was headed to your room to give it to you. Thank you, my lady, but I'm afraid I don't have much need for a lamp. Please, sir, it's at my father's request. And what is he requesting I do with it exactly? 
He requests you place the lamp by the window in your room. I should have you know, my lady, I'm not quite fond of sleeping with a light on. Please, sir, whatever you do, do not extinguish the lamp's flame. My father's orders. As you wish. Good night, Mr. Myrick. Good night, my lady. I make my way upstairs and enter my room. Ignoring the orders of the innkeeper, I place the lamp on the window, but not before extinguishing its flame. I do not need the scent of garlic to protect me. As a matter of fact, I look forward to quite the opposite of the innkeeper's family. I welcome Lord Godfrey to my room. His presence here would make my journey to this town all the more easier. Gazing out into the town square at night puts my mind at ease. It's at times like these I find myself fascinated by the people of this world. I look out into the darkness of the night sky as I do many nights, and I wonder what it would be like if I were able to fall asleep. Usually I don't mind waiting for the sun to rise. Some nights, like tonight, I wait until the sky is at its darkest. At the peak of that hour, I shall leave the confines of this room in order to feed. As the moment draws closer, I prepare to take my leave. I move through the shadows in silence until I reach the outside. I find myself briefly distracted by the sight of the full moon as I hover above the city. I clear my mind and focus on searching for my prey. With meat so scarcely supplied in this town, my search may take a... What's this? It appears I may have spoken too soon. I descend to the ground, only to find my prey patiently awaiting me. There he stands on all four legs, with only a wooden fence to separate us. I come close and gently stroke his hair. What a marvelous stallion! Quickly I bite into his neck. He whines loudly as I devour him. His loud noises matter little to me. Soon I will have drained this creature until he becomes nothing but ash, leaving no trace I was ever here. As I finish and witness the ashes of this animal scour to the winds, I take notice to something my hunger led me to ignore. I turn at its direction. That's when I noticed him. Staring at me through a barred window, naturally he screams. At this point I find myself at a loss on what action to pursue, Judging by the bars in the window, the man is a prisoner of some sort. Perhaps I should take my leave. I sense a familiar scent coming. Who goes there? Show yourself! M Mr. Myrick! What are you doing out here? I was out looking for where you might be staying. I know earlier you... Yes, of course. I must say, Mr. Myrick, you are a brave man to wander the streets alone at night. Do come in, please. We enter inside what appears to be some sort of room made to look more like a post. No doubt this is the town's prison keep. As I look around at the lack of decor, I notice Basim reaching into his drawer and pulling something out. He approaches me with a stern look. I apologize for being so upfront, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to remove your gloves and hold this. I do as I am told. With my hands now out in the open, he places a silver coin in my right palm and closes my hand. I am all too familiar with his agenda. Seconds go by as he slowly opens my hand to reveal the coin, but most importantly, to his relief, my hand remains unharmed. Oh, thank the Lord. For a moment there, when I first met you, I thought perhaps you were one of them. I'm sorry to disappoint you. On the contrary, now I can trust you. What is it that you're tucking back into your sleeve? This? It's for my own protection. That's a rather large nail, sir. It's made of silver. And you planned to plunge that at me? Only if you fail the tests and the coin burned through your flesh. 
Then I am most fortunate that it didn't. We are both fortunate, sir. Now, if you'd please follow me right through this way, Mr. Myrick. He pulls a set of keys from his pocket. As he opens the locked door in front of him, I start to notice him change once more, from calm to nervous. What was behind that door that suddenly shifted his demeanor? I was about to find out. He opens the door to reveal a large stone hallway filled with wooden doors all around. We walk until we reach the third door on the right. He opened the metal flap on the door. Allowing me to gaze in, I stood in shock for a moment as I realized the man behind the door was the man who witnessed me feeding. At this point, I find myself once again having to remain nonchalant in order to conceal my secret. At dinner time, I never had a chance to finish my story. You see, Mr. Myrick, as I ran from that castle that day, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this man. He and I were both headed for my horse. He had obviously just escaped from the castle, since he appeared more like a prisoner than a frightened drifter. Nevertheless, I overpowered him in his attempt to steal my horse. You brought him back with you? Why? I figured any sane man would try to do the same thing if they were running for their lives, especially after what I just witnessed. What have you learned from him? That's just it. Nothing. I can't tell what language he speaks. As far as I can gather, it's Latin-based, but I've had no luck communicating with him. I peeked inside the cell once more. The man sits there on the floor, frightened. No doubt this is my doing. As I start to think of ways around my current predicament, I take a closer look at the window where he saw me devouring the horse. It would appear Lady Luck is on my side, for it would seem that from an interior view of the window, the glass appears to be very dirty. Even with my sight, I have a hard time making out any detail of what's outside. I'm confident this man only saw a blurry figure and can in no way identify me. I should probably make my assumptions absolute before I celebrate. Perhaps I shall try talking with him. Yes, well, you seem to have a gift for languages. Perhaps you may know how to better communicate with him. I'll just uh, wait out here and observe. I enter the cell and walk closer to the man inside. He curls up on the floor tighter than before, his body cradled between the back right corner of the wall. At close inspection, the man appears to be rather young. However, the abundant amount of facial hair, coupled with his long curly locks, give him the appearance of a middle-aged man. I take notice to his long-sleeved cream-colored shirt, which had as many stains as it did holes and sewn-up gashes. He wore shredded brown pants with one pant leg at knee length and no footwear. His stench was more appalling than even Otto's. His heartbeats, the quickest I've ever come to encounter. I find myself now more anxious than Basim to discover what this Neanderthal has to tell. What more will he reveal to me of Castle Godfrey? Please, please, let me out of here, please! All in good time, my friend. You, you speak French. Oh, thanks the Lord. Listen to me. You have to get me out of here. We all have to get out of here now. Easy now. Calm yourself. Breathe nice and slow. Good. Now, tell me, what is your name? Edmund. Edmund Dartes. Who, who is he? What, what has he told you? His name is Edmund. He's French. That's all that he has told me so far. What is a Frenchman doing out this far east? A ask him what he knows about Castle Godfrey. I want to know what he was doing there. More importantly, I want to know if he ever saw seven children in the castle. What is he saying? What is that man telling you? He is working for him, isn't he? No one is safe. We must leave this place. Edmund, I need you to calm down. And I need you to tell me everything you know. Okay. 
Okay. Good. Now, from the beginning. This all started about a month ago. Then I received a letter all sealed with the Dart family emblem. When I opened it, the letter stated that I had an Aunt Marguerite who had recently passed. Upon her passing, she named me the sole living heir. She left me her castle in Bosnia and a large sum of fortune. And you believed all of this? The letter bared a family crest. Besides, thanks to my father, I am no one at the town of Valence. I plan to take my newfound fortune, sell the castle, and return to France a rich man once more. And now here you are, locked within a small confine, poor, alone, and far from home. Yes, I had thought of not taking the journey, believe me. But the next day, there was a man at my door. Mr. Myrick, what has he told you? Has he mentioned the children? Ask him about the children! In a minute, Mr. Bazim. Please continue, Edmund. You said a man was at your door. What man? Yes, yes, a Bosnian man. He claimed to be from this town of Novi. At first, I found it odd that a man from so far away could speak French as well as he. But then he told me that he cared for my aunt for many years, and she had taught him French so that she could feel more at home when they were together. Did this man bring you here to this town? No, no. We passed this town and headed straight for my aunt's castle. That is where I first gazed upon him. Who? The vampire. Tell me more. His name is Lord Godfrey, and he is a living horror, a plague upon this earth. What happened in the castle? Every night he would take a seal dagger and slice it into my chest. Then he would drain the blood from my flesh into a golden goblet until it was full. Only then would he drink it. That doesn't sound very vampire-like. Did he ever speak to you? Every day. He spoke French almost as well as you or I, almost as if he'd learn it just to talk to me. What did he tell you? The reasoning behind my torture. What is he telling you? Everything I need to hear. Carry on, Edmund. He claimed that almost a century ago, he struck terror across all of Europe. He delighted in kidnapping women from across his reach and bringing them back to his castle, to lay with and ultimately devour. One day, he kidnapped a gypsy woman and forced her to lay with him. As the gypsy woman prayed, he defiled her. It was only when he pierced her flesh and drank of her blood that he realized it was no prayers the gypsy woman had chanted, but rather blood magic. As the gypsy ran from the castle, it was then he felt the effects of her magic, for no matter day or night, if he set foot outside of his castle, it would be the same as if he walked out into the sunlight. She imprisoned him in his own castle. Yes, but unfortunately for the gypsy woman, he had already beat her. And even though she never turned, she was still linked to him. He could not leave his castle, but he knew how to find her. How does this pertain to you? He told me the gypsy was my great-grandmother, Marguerite. You see, Lord Godfrey has spent a lot of time tracking my family and spending every resource possible to end his curse. He has familiarized himself over the years with the knowledge of gypsy blood magic. That's why he needs your blood the way he does. After drinking my blood, he was able to finally leave his castle. However, the effects last only a few hours. And how many times would you say you saw him leave his castle? About six or seven times. Why do you ask? I have to go now. Open the door, Bazim. Where are you going? Please, don't leave me here, please! What happened? What, what did he tell you? Everything that I need to know. What is that supposed to mean? W wait, where are you going? I ignore Bazim as I make my way out of the prison keep, knowing he will follow. I could tell from his heartbeat the entire time. Everything Edmund had told me was true. If I don't head to Castle Godfrey now, I fear I will miss my chance to meet Lord Godfrey for good. I feel Bazim getting closer. 
he will lead me to Castle Godfrey, or this town will have to find a new constable. <laughs>